Hi everyone, it's Nicole Nolishad here today with a project for the Vicky Bluton design team. I'm going to be playing around with the new texture paste in the Let's Wander collection and one of the new stencils too. So I've decided to use this fun uh, window pane like stencil and I'm going to open up all my colors of texture paste here. I love them, they're just a creamy, rich, vibrant color. I'm just going to add the smallest amount of texture paste to a clear packaging slip with a few drops of water and you can see it creates like a really thin uh, paint of sorts. I am going to dab the stencil into it and then dab off any bubbles that kind of are made just from dipping it into the watery stencil paint um, and lifting it up will create a bit of a bubble so I'm just going to dab off a little bit. You can also see I'm going to mix some colors together to create a few different colors. There is no orange in the collection, but you can absolutely make an orange really easily with that red and the yellow. So I'm just going to add the two colors together, kind of damp off any of the bubbles, and then place that stamped stencil onto my page. And you can see it creates a really pretty kind of not perfect effect onto my project uh, really easily and without a lot of mass too, which is kind of fun. So again, I'm going to repeat the same thing now with yellow. And as I'm going across the page, I'm actually kind of staggering up and down um, where I place each of those colors. And I'm having them slightly overlap so that there's no strict line of the color as I go um, across the page here. I'm going to do the same thing here with green. Again, dabbing off any little bubbles that I see and pushing it down. And then I'm rubbing my paper towel over top just to kind of clean up any paint that kind of goes in between the stencil as I push down. And the smallest bit of blue you can see makes this such a pretty teal blue color. I'm going to dab this off and I'm going to do one more just on the top. I, there's a little bit extra on the stencil and I was able to do a little bit of an extra stamp along the top. And now I just need to make a purple color. So I'm going to add the tiniest bit of blueberry pie and sugared strawberry, the pink and just mix those three colors together to make a bit of a purple and add a couple more drops of water just to kind of make that a little more fluid. Uh, for this technique, you do need to have it a little bit runny, not thick like paint, um, but a, not quite as thin as a watercolor. So somewhere in the middle there, you wanna be able to have enough of the product on the stencil that it will stick to a stencil and that you can push it down onto the paper um, much like you would a stamp image. So now I have all my stenciling stamping done, um, but I wanted to add just a little bit more color. So I'm going to go ahead and just add more droplets to my page. Um, had I thought about this sooner, I wouldn't have wasted all that product in the beginning. Um, but you can see I'm just mixing a little bit more of that texture paste again with some water and then just adding droplets with my round brush onto the background of my page. And that's just to kind of extend that color section on my cardstock background and I am using foundations paper for the background for this just because it does take the water well even though I'm not using a ton of water um, if you did this on a regular cardstock it may still warp from the water that is in the texture paste when you stamp it. So I'm going to let this set aside to dry it's not going to take very long and there isn't a lot of water in it my page definitely did not warp so it was very low on the water scale, I guess you could say. Um, so I will set this aside to dry and just get my photos ready um, right away. I have multiple photos I'm going to use for this page and I'm going to clean up my texture paste as well, even want those to dry out. So I have some white cardstock now behind my photos and I wanted to draw more color into my rainbow. So I'm going to use various pattern paper from the Let's Wander collection. I'm going to use a six by eight pad and just some scraps here to add some color in behind my photos. And I'm going to add different pa pattern papers based on the colors of the rainbow where the photos are placed on my page. So I'm going to start with this red and then I'm going to use this really fun yellow cheetah print that's in the collection. And I'll put that in my yellow kind of area on the page. And I am adding more foam adhesive behind my photos just to make them pop just a little bit more. And one last color here with this kind of greenish teal color. And then I'll add this photo as well. So although you have three different photos, having all different colored paper, the photos kind of have one color scheme. It all kind of goes well together. I did trim off tiny little strips from the 6x8 paper pad of this rainbow, and I'm going to tuck those in beside my photos just to add that whole rainbow effect beside each of the three photos. And then I really wanted to think of a way that I could draw one consistent thing throughout the rainbow to kind of make it all just flow nicely. So I thought these stars from the 6x8 paper pad 
would be a really good element, even though they'll be in multiple colors, but they'll draw kind of a nice consistency throughout my project. So I'm going to cut some larger ones and some smaller ones in a variety of the colors of the rainbow. And I'm going to tuck those in around my photos and into some of those open areas to fill in the open areas and to just make one sort of, like I said, cohesive image that will kind of draw the whole page together. And don't worry if you're fussy cutting that you're cutting off something that is missing one of the points of the star. You can definitely just tuck that little edge like I did with my purple star there underneath my photo and uh, no one will know any different, I promise. So I am going to just adhere these down with some of them with foam adhesive, some of them just right underneath the photos. I'm using smaller ones and large ones and I'm just tucking them in along the color grouping as I kind of work down the page. And this is just a great way of using up your patterned paper should you have something like a star like this that's really easy to cut out. All right, so I have a lot of these stars cut out now. I, I did, at this point, cut down one of these fun Polaroid frames to kind of also tuck into my photos. But I, to be honest, I probably should have done that earlier um, to have it almost on there as like a fourth photo. I just couldn't figure out a way for me to get it to make it work and me like it. So I ended up going to put that to the side. I'm not going to use it. And then I, the title that I wanted, I'm going to use these cardstock or sorry, chipboard thickers from the Let's Wander collection. And I'm going to stick them down with a glue dot just to make sure they stay in place where I want them. And the best part about these letters is you can go in and color them yourself with many different mediums to add a little bit of flair. And I'm going to use just a little extra sticker here that I had from my stash. Now I thought it, this looked pretty good, but I wanted to add a little bit more color to that left side of the page. So I'm going to cut the UPC off one of the pattern papers here from Let's Wander. And then I wanted to bring a little bit more black in, so I cut a strip of paper from one of the papers in Wildflower and Honey. And while it was, or sorry, color kaleidoscope, that's it, not Wildflower and Honey, sorry. And while I was looking at that paper, I noticed there's some fun little journaling strips in there. I would cut down, and in there, there's also a little bit of a word bubble. That's a nice black that I thought would just bring a little bit more of that black into the page. So I'm going to cut that off. And there's also some stickers that go with this collection that I'm going to pop just in and around my photos, that fun heart, some photo labels, and a camera. And so now you can see my rainbow of color. Really fun to do this whole stamp stencil background. Now, this is definitely one of my new favorite kind of techniques. I love, I love this one. It's so easy and fun. And I'm just thinking of different ways it would look with different stencils. I hope you are inspired to give something like this a try. And I'll see you again soon. Have yourself a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye.